Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So I'm excited for this one. This is now the end of my revising for my electronics and electrical principles one module, which I had last year in my first year of electrical engineering. In that module, I learned Ohm's law and then basic circuit analysis techniques. So from them, you know, we've got the Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws, nodal analysis, mesh analysis, superposition theorem, Thevenin's, and then now we're on to Norton's theorem. So if you haven't already, Go back and watch the other videos and let's crack on so i haven't decided if i'm going to touch on capacitors yet i i don't know i'm not sure we shall have to see depends on how much time i have but i'm actually starting my my second year of uni tomorrow so i'm probably going to get bogged down with second year work so i might have to avoid the first year stuff for a bit okay so let's get into norton's and let's finish off this Revision Norton's theorem. I always struggle with the word theorem. Okay, so let's go for the definition. Norton's theorem states that any linear circuit, so same as all the other circuits, uh, containing several energy sources, meaning voltage and currents, and resistances, the so resistors, can be replaced by a single constant current generator in parallel with a single resistor. So basically, again, same as last time. You got a black box with a whole bunch of circuits in it. You get a, if you attach two term, two terminals to it, A and B. Then what we're saying is that we can convert the whole entire circuit, same as what we did with Thevenin's, into this circuit, which is a current source, and then a resistor in parallel to it, and then the load A and B. So this being I Norton, and this being R Norton, and then R at load. So pretty much exactly the same as what we did with Thevenin's, same thing. So the only thing to note is that this, in terms of, for this, for Norton's, we're looking at the short circuit current. That's the only thing you need to know. All right, so let's jump straight into the steps. Sadly, we don't have six steps for this one. We've only got five. So if you've watched my previous videos, you know what I mean by that. The so step one is to short the, the load. All right, so you basically remove this load and put a short, put a wire straight through it. Step one, short the load. Step two, to find the short circuit current. So that is in terms of I Norton. Step three is to find the open circuit. Here, this is an important point. The open circuit resistance. I'll elaborate more on that when we do, the, do our example. And that is R Norton. Cool. Step four is to draw the Norton circuit. And I'll draw an example. Well, as you saw, this this is the Norton circuit here. You've got the current source, I Norton. You've got R Norton, the resistor, in parallel with the current source. And then you've got the load there. So that is step four. And then the final step, which might seem obvious to you, but we need to find the current that goes through this load resistor. So find load current is i and that's it we're done um you might want to just it's, you just want to be comfortable with the current divider equation so you've got i load is equal to I, the input current which in this case is the norton current multiplied by the resistor that we don't want which is rn this one here right Divided by both of them added together. So RN plus RL, the load resistor. Cool. All right. So if you feel like I'm going a bit fast, it's because all of this has been covered already in Thevenin's theorem and the other one. So if you haven't watched those, go back and watch them. Trust me. All right. So let's do an example. Uh, let's draw a circuit. Give ourselves a resistor here. Give ourselves another resistor here. And then let's do a load A here. Call this RL. B, maybe we can go R1, R2, and then uh, let's give it some value, 6 volts. This is B1 or E1, however you want to. Um, some people label voltage sources with E, some use V. I don't know what the difference is, so it's all good to me. Let's go 4 ohm resistor here, and let's go 6 ohm resistor here. And we'll give R load 6 ohms. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Step number one, if you remember, is to short the load. This might seem trivial, 
um but do it like actual actually draw the circuit obviously you can see me i'm just i'm duplicating it so it seems like i'm cheating but it is it is important to 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 redraw it trust me how are you going to avoid making mistakes okay so we short the load step number one step number two is to find the short circuit current okay now I don't know if you've noticed, but I noticed straight away, and, and I've just I've just done this circuit randomly. So I've noticed straight away that now, if you look here, when you're looking at this circuit, if you imagine a bunch of let's do a different color, imagine some electrons firing out of the battery, going through this resistor, coming here. So will the electrons get split here? Would some go this way and some go that way? If you answered yes, you are wrong. Why? Because this is a short circuit, mate. The electrons are going to go straight this way. There's no way electrons are going through that resistor. Why? Because they're like me. They want to do the minimal amount of work possible. I'm not interested in, in going through a high resistance path. If you're telling me that there's a path here, it's completely clear. You can go down this way or there's another path here. So a whole bunch of weeds and whatnot. I'm taking a clear path. Why wouldn't I? So electrons do the exact same thing. They're going to go this way. And so basically what you can say here is that this whole entire path here is pointless. This resistor is useless and we don't need it when it comes to our short circuit current. So I'm just going to redraw. I'm just going to copy this circuit over here. Uh, we can just get rid of this. Okay. All right. So then now we just need to find our short circuit current, right? So... It's super basic now here. I mean, I probably should have done a harder one, but I Norton is going to be equal to what? V1 divided by R1, right? Because that's, it's literally, these are the only two things left in the circuit. So, you know, I divided by, so I equals V divided by R, right? V equals I R, I equals V divided by R. So you got six over four, which is uh, 1.5 amps. So we know that I Norton is equal to 1.5 amps. First, first bit done. Now on to step black. Step three is to find the open circuit resistance. Now this, this point is important. You want to memorize this step as open circuit resistance. And you know, I'll show you why. So what we're going to do is we're going to read, let's get the circuit again. Oh, one. Now this time here, when it comes to finding the resistance, we're not shorting the battery, the, the, sorry, the A to B terminals. We're just removing the load, but we're keeping it. It's keep, it's being kept as an open circuit. It's exactly the same as when we're doing sevens, basically. So we remove the load or sorry, remove the, yeah, remove the load with an open circuit and then we replace voltage sources, voltage sources with a short circuit and now we just need to find the total resistance of this circuit and obviously r1 is in parallel with r2 therefore you get 4 times 6 over 4 plus 6 which is equal to uh, 24 divided by 10 which is 2.4 so you got r norton is equal to 2.4 ohms there we go so now step Four is nice and nice and easy. We just need to draw the circuit. Draw Norton circuit. And you see what I mean? Like, if you're comfortable with Thevenin's, this is easy. Like, easy, easy stuff. Okay, so let's get our original circuit just so we have it here. Okay, so we have our original circuit here. And we've worked out that I Norton is equal to something. Can't remember what it is right now. And R Norton is equal to, what was it? 0.4? I remember. Let's go up. Uh, 2.4. 2.4 ohms and I Norton is 1.5 amps. Okay, so all we need to do now is here's the current uh, source, here's the resistor, there's the terminals, A, there's the load resistor, terminal B, this is I Norton, this is R Norton. This is 2.4 ohms and this is 1.5 amps. 
and we've got the R load, which we said was what was it? Six ohms. And that's it. Now we've drawn the Norton's equivalent circuit. And you could just stop there, but as you can clearly see, you've just got a current divider here to find out the current. So let's do step five is to find load current. Load current. Let's copy this. In case you didn't know, I'm doing all this on an iPad and when I was in my lectures and when I'll be in my lectures for this year as well, I'll be using my iPad to do this and you can see it's really rapid. Like you can copy, duplicate things. And so I highly advise, you know, iPad, Apple Pencil, if you can afford it, get it. It's just it's gonna change your studies. I mean, you can use the other Windows stuff as well. You know, doesn't matter. But I'm just saying, get a tablet and a pen. Trust me. Uh, doing this on paper, imagine you had to keep redrawing it. It's a pain in the backside. Don't do it. Okay. So we... As you can see, well, if you can't see, let's do it. So you've got electrons flinging this way, right? So they come to here and then they're getting split, right? Because we're not, it's not open circuit anymore. It's just standard resistor. So we just need to do our current uh, divider here. So what we can say is uh, I load is equal to the input current, which is I Norton times by the resistor that we don't want, which is R Norton over R Norton plus RL. So I load is equal to what's the input current 1.5 amps times by the resistor that we don't want, which is 2.4 over the sum of them both. So 2.4 plus 6 is 8.4. So I load is equal to 1.5 amps times and 2.4, 2.4 divided by 8.4, 2.4 divided by 8.4. 0 0.285, so 0 0.286, okay, 0 0.286, and then that gives us uh, times by 1.5, whoops, 1.5, 0 0.43, yeah, let's go for it, 0 0.43 amps, and that's it guys, we did it, so, you can see it's not it's not difficult, it isn't you know especially once you've once you've gotten comfortable with Bevanins and especially once you get com comfortable with superposition, the only thing that is going to throw you off is that when maybe your electric is going to give you a circuit instead of it looking like this, for example, right let me just uh show you some of the circuits that I did when I was studying for this sometimes you know, like you have this this circuit right, but sometimes you have a circuit it'll look like this and then it'll do this right and then you have a you know, current source this way and then and then they'll oops they'll stick the terminals here b a the R load there i mean it's the same thing it just looks confusing but it's the same thing uh final thing that i want to touch on and then we'll finish finish up this uh, series, which is nice, is the Norton's to Thevenin's equations. I touched on this at the end of my Thevenin's video, so hopefully it should make sense a bit, but I load, right, is going to be equal, obviously, to I Norton times R Norton over Rn plus Rl, right? That's what we've covered. So I Norton, however, if you wanted to find it, you could just take the V Thevenin and divide it by the R Thevenin, and you would get the uh, the, uh, the Norton current. You could also, if you wanted to find the V feminine, you can just take the I Norton and multiply it by the R Norton, and you'd get v, v feminine. So that's basically just using V equals I R. Nice, clever little trick. But once you've worked out one of, if you if you're working out Nortons and Thevenins for the same circuit, once you've got even Nortons and Thevenins, you don't don't go and do all of this again, please. Just use these memorize these it's v equals i r you should be able to get it memorize these two and uh yeah we'll save yourself a big head yeah or a lot of time really cool all right guys if you watched the whole series thank you very much i appreciate it. if you did watch the whole series leave a comment down below um and i'll give you a big thank you yeah thanks for watching i i really appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next one peace